So I'm going to show you a couple clips here, and I promise it's relevant, but I imagine most of you know who this is. If you don't, Chris Watts confessed and was convicted of killing his pregnant wife and young children back in August of 2018. It's actually an incredibly nuanced case. Um, I made a video on it a couple weeks back if you're interested. But the important thing to note here is because Chris confessed, we know he is being deceptive in these clips. So we know he's lying and everything about his body language <laughs> suggests that. And that's evident at the time. The whole country was super suspicious of him. Like he did not pass the test. We said, nope, this guy's he knows something. He is lying. Um, so I think this is really valuable footage to look back on. So let's give it a watch. Of the police or the sheriffs or your neighbors, is anybody, what is, what's, what's police saying to you? Right now, this is, what they're doing right now is with the canines in the sense, I think this is the biggest thing. This is the biggest thing they've done so far because yesterday they did all the Federal Police Department did all the searching of the house and tried to gather whatever information they could and with the detectives, officers, and sergeants, and today it's, uh, I mean, obviously with all the activity that's around. Shannon, Bella, Celeste, if you're out there, just, just just come back. Like, if somebody has her, just please bring her back. I need to see everybody. I need to see everybody again. This house is not complete with without anybody here. Please bring her back. Yeah, so clearly nobody bought this. A lot of red flags, a lot of deception going on, a lot of body language and mannerisms that are incongruent with what he's saying, and it's just clear he's bullshitting here. So these behaviors and cues that he's displaying are entirely involuntary, and he likely has no idea he is displaying such signs of deception. So what's going on in Chris's brain here is he is experiencing an emotional response from a stimulus in his environment that he perceives as a threat. Um, his limbic system is stimulated. This is the part of the brain that is involved in our emotional and behavioral responses, especially when it comes to survival. So when our limbic system is stimulated, this is also known as the fight or flight response. So when we perceive a threat in our environment and we enter that fight or flight stage, our limbic system is evoking emotions. And this is actually really interesting. It's um, these emotional responses are meant for survival because emotions tell us about a situation and help us prepare for a situation before, I guess, knowing all the facts. And it helps ensure survival and, you know, kind of rapidly process information and perceive threats within your environment. So all of this causes changes in the nervous system, like uh, changes in respiration or blood pressure. And that's why we see these mannerisms such as blink rate and hard swallowing, fidgeting and inability to kind of stay still. One big thing I do want to draw to your attention is eye movement. That's a big one I found in my research. A very reliable body cue is eye movement when processing information um, in terms of a perceived threat. So keep that in mind. All right, moving on from one awkward liar to another. Former Delphi Mayor Shane Evans acts extremely abnormally and there's no reason for him to be sh displaying such cues of fear, anxiety, um, stress. This individual is bugging out, you guys. Um, so I'm going to let most his body language do most of the talking. I'll add some, um, you know, body language cues at the bottom of the screen, but I really want you to focus on his body language because as we discussed, this is all to be interpreted by the observer. Um, so with that being said, let's get into it. And I will stop talking now. <laughs> Delphi Police Chief Steve Mullen, Indiana State Police Superintendent Doug Carter, FBI Assistant Special Agent in Charge Greg Massa, and Captain Dave Burston, Chief Public Information Officer for the Indiana State Police. Obviously, the reason we are here today is to give out information in the double homicide of Liberty German and Abigail Williams. On February 13th, Abigail Williams 13 and Liberty German 14 went on a hike at the Delphi Historic Trails. On February 13th, they were reported missing 
later in the afternoon when they failed to return to a pickup location as a family member returned to pick them up from their hike. After organized searches on February 14th, one of those search parties unfortunately found the bodies of the two teens. Evidence in this case has led investigators to believe this is a double homicide, and that's what we're investigating at this time. Also shown uh, in front of me is an enlarged depiction of a person believed to be the suspect in this case. We are actively looking for this person. We believe this person is our suspect, and we would like any information Regardless of how small or minute you might believe that information to be, it might be the one piece of a very large puzzle that helps us get this person in custody. So please call our tip line, 844-459-5786. And again, I would like, as we go through this press conference, to remind the media there's going to be information that is germane to our investigation that we're not going to release today during these periods of times, and I've only had a couple of other situations in my lifetime. <clears throat> I'm able to stand before you and say that. Why Libby? Why Abby? Why Delphi? Why Carroll County? At this time, I would like to invite Greg Massa, Assistant Special Agent in charge for the FBI to the podium. Good morning. As the assistant special agent in charge interviews, uh, uh, helping with lead tracking system, um, providing intelligence uh, analysis support, providing technical assistance. Uh, every night I uh, update our uh, FBI headquarters uh, it, uh, to our deputy assistant director. And as the superintendent mentioned, this has been briefed to the FBI director on two occasions. So whatever resource that the FBI has available, whether it's here in the state of Indiana or nationally, we have brought those resources and we will continue to do so. Um, we were committed to working around the clock as we have been over the last nine days and we'll continue to do so until this case is solved. Go back nine days and go back to the afternoon of February 13th, Monday, February 13th. And, and just think if you had an interaction with an individual who uh, inexplicably canceled an appointment that you had had together or uh, an individual called into work sick um, and um, canceled a, a, an important appointment or a social engagement, and at the time gave what would have been a plausible explanation. Uh, my cell phone broke or I had a flat tire on my car. But in retrospect, that excuse no longer holds water. That, 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 may, be, that may be important. Likely so are behavioral indicators that this uh, individual may have exhibited since the afternoon of May 13th. Did this individual travel unexpectedly? Did they change their appearance? Did they shave their beard, uh, cut their hair, change the color of their hair? The superintendent mentioned the clothes that this individual was wearing in the photo. Did they will also be utilizing digital billboards? Um, uh, and, and in any way we can spread this, this message, we will. Thank you, Tony. We do have some new information for you today. Uh, it's in the form of a, an audio file uh, from the cell phone that Liberty German had with her at the time. We're not going to play everything that we have, uh, but Liberty had the presence of mind uh, to turn on her video camera. Uh, again, we're not going to be able to share everything with you but we are going to share this audio clip with you momentarily with the hope that somebody will recognize this voice. And I want to be very clear that what you're about to hear is just four short words, excuse me, three words, down the hill. You're going to hear this played four times. The audio quality is not superb, but there's enough there that somebody could recognize this person's voice. And as Superintendent Carter said, not to rationalize away. If you hear this today and you think, my God, that sounds like fill in the blank, call us. Make an anonymous tip. Tell us who you think it is. Let us investigate it. If it's not the right person, 
they'll just be out a little bit of time and they'll be cleared and they can go on and they'll never know that you called. But you may tell us who the right person was and you could be the person that helps us to solve this horrible crime. Micah, play the clip, please. Would you play it one more time? So that audio clip later today will be available on the Indiana State Police website. You can simply go to our website and add the extension slash Delphi.htm. There will be information on that website that talks about the reward that is being uh, collected now. Sergeant Slocum will talk more about that, the amount of uh, money that's been raised towards solving this case. And really money shouldn't be what drives somebody to help solve this. Just a sense of community and wanting to help and to get this person off the street. The image that you see there of the suspect, that came from Liberty's phone. I think many of you had speculated that before. We weren't prepared to discuss that at the time. We have more video. We're not releasing it. It's germane to our investigation. And it's important that we spread that person's voice far and wide for somebody that will recognize who that is and will call us and tell us. I also want to uh, tell you that there will be a tip line There's an email tip line. I'll spell it out for you, and it'll be on the website later, but if you want to copy this down, tips can be emailed to A-B-B-Y-A-N-D-L-I-B-B-Y-T-I-P at C-O, excuse me, C-A-C-O-S-H-R-F dot com. So that is Abby and Libby Tip at C-A-C-O-S-H-R-F dot com. Phone number, email, call the local, call the Delphi police, call the Carroll County Sheriff's Department, call the state police. Help us to capture the person responsible for these murders. As especially, we know that there are going to be lots of questions that, that we specifically cannot answer because there are things that we do not want to tip our hand to the person that's responsible for this. Uh, that kind of information we're keeping close to ourselves. Is it reasonable to think that uh, that's an area, one of, one of two things happened. That was a chance encounter, that's possible. Don't think it's likely, but it's possible. Or that person knew that they were going to be there. That's possible as well. Those are things that we're looking to. Question over here. Uh, similar to what I just said, there, there's sp specific pieces of information that we're, we're not discussing. Uh, the best example that I can give you is if, uh, if somebody is a victim of a burglary and then they're murdered, everybody wants to know how they were murdered. If we go into the details and we say they were stabbed twice in the back and they were shot in the head, uh, then everybody hears that. And then when we get tips, people tell us that, and the tip is useless. We're keeping information that will only be known by the person or by who that person told. And when that's shared with us, it will set off the alarm bells and we'll know. Greg, I'll let uh, Agent Massa address that. Uh, there has been no indication right now that, that this is a part of a, a serial um, uh, murder, if that's what your question is. Um, so uh, as, as of the facts that we have collected at this point in time, we have not tied it to any other uh, known homicides. No, I, there's nothing I can speak to about the scene investigation and collection of evidence. Over here. 
Uh, so there, there's lots more that we're looking at. As I indicated before, the, the reason we believe this is suspect is based on the totality of the evidence that we've gathered thus far. That has led us to believe this is the person that at least participated in the murders of Liberty German and Abigail Williams. Photo might recognize him. Uh, again, a family member might recognize that. Uh, unfortunately, it's the best we have, and that's what we're going to go with at this time. If we decide to go other routes later, we'll let you know. This young lady's a hero, there's no doubt. To have enough presence of mind to activate the video system on her cell phone to record uh, what we believe is, is criminal behavior that, that is about to occur. Uh, as far as the, the first part of your question, that's something we're going to keep uh, close to the vest as part of our investigation, but there's no doubt in our minds that that young lady is a hero. So I will leave the probative value of this evidence up to you. My opinion is that this individual has no reason to be displaying such inconsistent body language. And, you know, like we said, it's not an exact science. So these mannerisms don't a hundred percent detect deception, but when you combine them with the stimulus that's being said um, by whoever's speaking, he tends to display these mannerisms when someone of power like the FBI agent or Doug Carter is mentioned, or if they're speaking, his body language is much more tense and obvious incongruent. Um, so I believe there is no reason for him to be entering fight or flight mode unless he detects a threat, which I'm not sure why you would detect a threat when, you know, you want this case solved. So that's what I think. But again, this is up to you. It is subjective evidence. The observer's opinion is really ultimately the only thing that matters with this kind of evidence. Um, I hope I have shown you what you needed to see here, but I do want to send you over to Joe from a Shattered Mirrors channel. I'll link the uh, analysis below, but he did an excellent breakdown of this press conference. He really walks you through it in real time and really you can you get the benefit of him noticing a lot of things for the first time and it's really just an excellent watch so i want to send you over that way and sleep on this a little bit um i am going to continue searching for any kind of evidence here let me be clear if there is exculpatory evidence of any kind on this individual i would love to find it i would love to display it um but I'm still searching for that exculpatory evidence. So if he's able to even come out and give me some of the answers I need to continue my investigation, um, then that'd be great because I can't move on from this because of what I found. Um, and this is all public record. This is all in the local reporting, the county archives. Please seek out information yourself. And in the meantime, I will not be intimidated out of speaking about this individual. I am not afraid of a lawsuit. I know my rights as an American citizen, and one of them include the ability to speak freely upon public figures, especially those operating in a governing capacity. As for anyone else that was there that day, know someone that was there that day or covered for anyone in any way, shape, or form. I need you to know that you're vile and I'm going to find out about you and I'm going to report everything I find and I will make sure that you are held accountable for what you allowed to have happen to those little girls.